I'm Suckland. Today I think I got something that is long overdue. A reworked crafting guide for everything that is needed for a bow dead eye. Of course, just a crafting guide would be boring. So I also will include a full great link for the bow build. It should everything be fixed. So if you were going on my Discord, which an invite to the Discord is in the description. Then on build discussion, you will find this text file, which you can either download or directly copy from here. Then you can, if there's context in this chat, you can go, it's pinned to the top. You can just enter this link. Okay, let me fully copy that. Copy this. You go to better trade. Register current, tr uh, nope, import folder, click it, and there we have Elemental Bow 33 bookmarks. Everything ready to go. Now that out of the way, let's hit Craft of Exile and take a look at the items that we want to make. So, we're gonna be starting with one important mention actually. A very important. The taming an item that got buffed this league and that we definitely want to use in the upcoming league can only be acquired by vendoring three items. That is the Barracks Respite, Barracks Grip, Barracks Pass. Out of these three rings, Barracks Respite is the most expensive one. If you're at league start and you want the taming, check the price of the three rings and compare them to the price of the taming. Keep in mind that when you do this 3 to 1 trade, these 3 rings into a vendor and you get a taming pack, your taming will be unidied and could be any roll. Just wanted to get that out of the way so people have the chance to actually do it. Now with that, we're gonna be starting with the bow. For our bows, we want something very simple initially and later on when we get to the later stages of the game. So this is looking at mid budget and high budget. When we want to make a good bow, we're going to work with the following. We want three flat damage types. And then we want a decent attack speed and a decent crit chance. Now, getting this randomly rolled, it, it's not that easy. I'm completely ignoring the existence of recombinators for the sake of this video. This will be using simple crafting mechanics. So we're going to head over to the emulator. We're going to be using a bow, preferably currently a spine bow, an ivory bow, or, where is it, a bone bow. You will notice that all these three bows have a 6.5 crit chance and a 1.4 attack speed. The flat physical damage does not matter as we are going for elemental hit. If we are going fist conversion, it's a different subject, but this is for elemental hit. So we're going to be using any of these three bases. And we're going to be looking for an item level, wait, let me check that I'm not saying anything cor incorrectly, 82. If we are going back to calculator, 82 is what we need to hit T1. So we're going to look for an 82 item level bow. And we're going to be getting any of the three elemental mods, preferably lightning of fire, fractured as a T2 or a T1. So we're going to be starting with a T2 Fracture on an item level 82, Bone, Ivory or Spine Bow. Once we have this, the next step is to Essence the Bow. So we're going to hit the Essence. Now if you have a Fractured Fire, you want to use an Essence of Wrath. Where is it? I'm blind there. Essence for Wrath for Lightning Damage. If it's a Fractured Cold or Fractured Lightning, you want to use Anger Essence to guarantee Fire Damage. So we're going to be rolling this Guaranteed Lightning Damage on a bow that has Guaranteed Fire until we're going to be hitting a High Cold. So in this case, I hit a Good Cold, a Good Fire, and a Good Lightning Damage. Now my suffixes, I don't really like them. So we're going to be preparing a Scaring. But before we do that, of course, we're going to craft the suffix. Prefixes can be changed. Where is it? Yeah. Prefixes can be changed. Then we scour the item, removing all suffixes. And now we have two options. 
the cheap option which for this stage of the bow i would recommend is you're going to be crafting multi-mod and then you're going to be crafting attack speed and then you're going to be crafting crit chance with flat stats and this bow will last you a good while this is a good bow you have a t2 fracture a t1 essence and then a t2 ro randomly rolled mod or well not randomly rolled but a teacher rolled mod and then you have a tax speed and crit chance this is a good bow now of course eventually we do want an even better bow so what we're gonna be doing instead of going for going for a fractured prefix we're gonna be going expensive so we will be needing an 86 bow and we are gonna go for the suffix plus two projectiles now 86 means that we will likely be getting a base and we we can't get a 86 fracture bow randomly dropped so we will we need to get a base we need to roll it for this then we're gonna be Alk regal exalt get it to four mods or craft instead of exit or what or you chaos roll it just get a four mod bow with plus two projectiles and then we're going to be grabbing a fracturing orb and we're going to be hoping for the sake of everything that we hit that plus two projectile. Now if you want to be slightly more secure you could arguably also roll like a T1 fire or lightning on it. But that means that the cost to get to that base is going to be more extensive pre-fracturing orb. And it's going to take like four fracturing orbs on average to fracture bow attacks fire two additional arrows. Also, if the average cost of four fracturing orbs and then assumed the rolling currency is more expensive than just buying the base, buying the base is also an option. So once we have our fractured base, we're going to be going back to essences. We again want to use anger or ref essence. I prefer anger in this case. And we want to roll this till we hit a very high second damage mod. So we're going to be rolling this for a while. This is T5, so we would continue this and so on. We got a here is T3. Let's assume that we, instead of T3, we have hit T1 so that the video doesn't need to actually roll everything. But let's say we got super lucky and we hit T1, T1. Now, actually, make it a bit more realistic. Let's say we hit T2, T2. What we now want to do is want to craft a suffix. prefixes cannot be changed and then we want to hit harvest and as we have lightning and fire we want to do a reforge cold and now we pray for everything that we get lucky one more time and we hit a good high tier cold modifier now do note that this can take several approaches and you maybe want to consider just selling an in-between stage if it's in a good state and you can make a profit or you maybe want to continue on the same base but as you can see here it is not likely to get a good outcome this is a very expensive bow but it will result in a lot of damage if it actually hits at some point so eventually you're gonna hear like now t3 we can say that's okay enough not necessarily okay enough but it's good enough so now we have T1, T2, T3, preferable would have been T1, T2, T2, or T1, T1, T2. We're going to craft yet another prefix can be changed, and we're going to Veiled Orb, which is going to guarantee a Veiled Suffix. Now that we have the Veiled Suffix, we need to craft a Suffix, which, if I remember correctly, is the damage per charge. Then we're going to Unveil. And we do hope that we get this thing, crit chance, strength, intelligence, or that we're going to be getting something like, no, oh, this time we would have gotten unlucky. So if we get unlucky, we need to again scour our suffixes and repeat this process. But we want crit chance or we want attack speed, preferably attack speed with stats, and then craft the other thing. And in that case, now I have my attack speed, I have my crit chance. I have my three suffixes, I have my three prefixes, the bow would be done. It's theoretically simple steps, but these are expensive steps to get a plus two bow with good elemental modifier and good suffixes. So it can be fairly expensive. Moving on to the quiver. 
The quiver is, in a sense, simple yet very annoying at times. So for the quiver, we want the following modifiers. We want damage with bows, life, attack speed, crafted or not crafted, crit multi, and plus one projectile. And then we want also a high added lightning damage. So these are again six modifiers we want on a bow, but of course we can't get them all in a single step. We need to go step by step. There are two ways you can start this. We can either go for a fractured plus one projectile, or we can go for a fractured crit multi. Now if we are looking here, we're gonna be needing at least level 81 to hit T2, call, uh, T2 bow damage, or we need level 76 to have T1, uh, no wait, lightning we are forcing, where was it? Yeah, 74 for crit multi. So we're gonna be going to the emulator, restart, we want to have our offhand quiver, and we want to have either a primal arrow quiver for damage, or preferably, where is it? Yeah, a feathered arrow quiver for uh, for arrow speed, which we do have the mastery to get also damage from that. So this is damage and speed, which means coverage. We want it at least to be level 74. Now, if we are looking at our, our approachable crafting for this, we want either of these fractured and roll the other thing. So if we are going to be using an... Where is it? Essence of Torment. And we say this is Fractured. If we have... Yes, yes. A Fractured Crit Multi. And we are rolling for plus one projectiles. We're going to need 147 Essences of Torment. Right? At the correct item level. 126 Essences of Torment. Slightly better. And if we have the other way around. We're going to be needing less Essences of Torment. However, we're going to be spending a lot more for the base. So if we are looking for plus one projector, now of course I know it's standard, but just wanting to show the difference. The prices on crit multi-fracture are usually a lot cheaper than they are for plus one projector. So this is going to be a trade-off. You have a bigger initial price, but a lower crafting cost, or you're going to have a lower craft uh, initial cost, but a higher crafting cost because it's going to take more essences. So now to the crafting process whatever you're going to be using you're going to be having starting with one and the next step is to get the other so we now have our base or fractured base and we're going to be using an essence of torment either deafening or shrieking either works fine deafening is slightly better than a mod roll and shrieking is a t1 mod roll and we're going to roll this on this item till we hit the suffix crit multi, but of course an, as a T1 mod. Or if we win with the crit multi, we're going to roll it till we get the plus one projectile. Now, going to take a few examples here. Hope maybe I get it early. Oh, all right. So I'm going to be, again, cheating a little bit to showcase this better. So let's say we have rolled now our bow. This would actually be a decent outcome. The only issue is we need an open suffix on top of the two suffix and the one prefix what we want. So what are we going to be doing? Well, we need to hit an annulment and we need to pray that we hit that one mod in, in four mods that we don't like. Whenever we miss, we need to essence, uh, essence again till we get there again, which is why there's a big argument to be made to go with a more expensive fracture because it's gonna be we're gonna get to the stage where we can annul quicker. It's it's really a trade-off. It used to be that the cost of the crit multi was so cheap because people were just not aware of them that it was really worth it to do that. Nowadays it is a it is a the margin in between isn't as big. Once you have hit your suffix, once you have two suffixes and one prefix, we're gonna be crafting the suffix cannot roll attack mods. Now, going back to the calculator, we're going to be looking here that on all the prefix things on a bow, we have 
only two that are not attack modifiers. You can see here, if I click the non-attack here, it only highlights damage with bow and life. So if we have crafted, cannot wall attack modifiers, what happens is, if we exalt, it's going to be a guaranteed life. And if we annul, it's either going to remove the craft, or it can only remove the life or the bow damage. So we're going to be slamming an exalt, hoping that's a good life or a good bow damage. If it's neither good, we're going to annul. If it doesn't hit the cannot wall attack mode, we're going to back to slamming. And we gotta repeat this process when it hits the cannot wall attack. We recraft it on. And we're gonna repeat the process till we hit a life we are happy with. Or a bow damage. And once we have one happy thing, we're gonna exit slam one more. And then we hope that we hit a second thing we're happy with. If in this case it's G6, I'm not happy with that. It's back to the annulment. We hit the life set times. We hit the mod more set times. But we need to repeat. Get rid of everything. T3 life. That's okay enough. E5 bow damage, it's not okay. In this case, would we'll be back to a new annulling. I'm going to shortcut here again. E3, it's good enough. So now we have a T1 to T2 flat lightning, E3 to T2 life or T1 life, E3 to T2 bow damage, E1 crit multi, one projectile, and finish it with the craft of attack speed or resistances or whatever is missing. And now we have our bow and quiver done. The, this quiver will last until you are able to afford a mirror tier quiver that is going to be even more insane with implicits. Now we get to the armors. Now, in, I used to recommend armor evasion hybrids. And for the longest time, I thought it was really great because we can just replace one of our offensive armors with determination. But in recent leagues, uh, this thing has changed. And I'm now very very firm on using pure evasion bases and also recommending that so what we can do is we go with a pure evasion helmet and we want to get as much life as we can which next leak is going to be easier we're going to get new bases we're going to get higher life rolls it's going to be amazing we want to combine that with a good spell suppression roll with a Good spell suppression roll. Now for a T1, we would need 85, so we usually go for T2. Then a good chaos uh, chaos rest roll. We're gonna combine that with an essence modifier, like I don't know, reservation efficiency. I actually do not. I just phrased it like that. Reservation efficiency, or we can use something that we can only get via essence, which would be in this case, um, where is it? Intelligence. And then we combine that with a little bit of more armor, or in this case, evasion. So if we hit to the emulator, we reset. We want the helm to be a high evasion base like Sinner or Lion Pelt, Silken Hood, or one of the new bases. We want to be at least level 81, if not 85. And then we're going to be starting crafting of this. Of course, just similar to with a bow and a quiver, we want to start with a fractured basis. The fracture I like to start is a high roll chaos resistant. Now, there's a simple reason for that. Let's say we do want to essence. So we're going to be using an essence and we're going to be using an essence of loathing for reservation efficiency. If we are rolling chaos res, we are running just for chaos res, we have our fracture in spell. So we have, wait, first, we have our Fracture and Chaos Rest and we roll for Spell Suppression. That's 82 Essences. While the other way around, we have a Fracture here and we roll for here. That's way more Essences because the rates for Chaos Rest aren't as lenient as the rates for Spell Suppression. So this is why we want to Fracture Chaos Rest and then we're going to roll for Spell Suppression. So once we Fractured, we're going to Essence, we're going to Essence of Loathing. Or, of course, as mentioned, if we need intelligence, it's a great source to get intelligence by using Essence of Spite. Or if you really need strength, there's Essence of Rage. Those are usually the essences we use on a helmet here. Now, we're going to be rolling Reservation. We're going to be having our Chaos Rest, and we're going to roll till we hit a Spell Suppression. Because we guarantee two suffixes, we're just looking to hit the third suffix. Of course, can take a few attempts gonna roll till I hit a random tier then I'm gonna progress my example from there 
You can at only point also settle for something else, but I do like to have special suppression on all pieces of gear because it makes me save some points on the passive tree. But there, at some point we roll something of special suppression. Now this wouldn't be enough. You would continue rolling till you hit your actual T2 modifier, or maybe settle on 10% with a T3 modifier. Now once we have our suffixes, we have three suffixes on the item, we get to Eldritch Crafting. Eldritch Crafting is actually a very simple thing. Using Eldritch Annulments can only remove a prefix or suffix depending on who is dominant. To make an Eater dominant, to affect only prefixes, we need to apply any Ember. Now let's assume there is already an icon on the item. Well dang, how we make Eater dominant now? We just need to use a bigger Ember than we used an icon. So this icon is on greater, so that's a two, tier 2 Eicher, or Eicher, I don't actually know how it's pronounced. So we're going to be using a T3 or a T4 Ember and make it dominant. Now Exarch is dominant. So you see the life life I have here, if I use an Eldritch Annulment, it, it cannot hit the suffixes. It can only remove a prefix. So what we can do now, we're going to be utilizing this specific way of annulling items so that we can only is that we can force basically a specific mod. If we look on calculator again, quickly showing this, the evasion, if you're looking here and we want to hit life, the next biggest thing is percentage, uh, is flat evasion rating and percentage evasion rating. So what we can do is we craft flat evasion rating because of item based restriction, that is slightly better. So we're going to be crafting flat evasion, which is linked with the craft to flat evasion or any other flat. Oops, that's the wrong click. So we're going to be crafting, is it? There, plus two evasion. Going to hit the lowest here. Now we have this on. Now we're going to be using a normal exalted dot because suffixes are already filled. And look, we hit T1 live. Now, if you do this, you're not going to instantly hit T1 live. I got extremely lucky. I'm going to take a few more just to show this, uh, to show the actual process. So we now didn't hit T1 live. All right, what do we do now? We remove the craft. We take an Eldritch Annulment and we remove the prefix. Now we re-add the craft. We go back to the exalt and we slam it again. And we repeat this process till we get a live roll we are happy with. So it's craft, exalt slam. Eldritch Annul, uh, remove craft, Eldritch Annulment. And we repeat this till we hit something like the, uh, like a life that we're happy with. In this case, with T3, I wouldn't be happy with. Later on, early on, I would be happy with. So we re repeat this process. Remove. Annul. Craft. Exalt Slam. Remove. Annul. Craft. Exalt Slam. Remove. Annul, craft, exert slam, until we would be hitting our high life. I think it's very simple once you understand how it works. So now we have three suffixes, one life, and now we're going to be crafting mana. Right, so we, we want, actually on a helmet we don't have mana. So now we want to have either high percentage or high flat evasion. So we need to craft something to get either of these outcomes. We already have life, so we can either cr uh, we can block the hybrid, which we cannot block sadly. So we can just block the hybrid life, which we want to craft in the end. Now here, to be fair, the helmet it's a lot less important to block something in this final step than it's on the other items. But we can just let's just block this. We're gonna exalt obey. All right. I I did a mistake. That's why. I need it down here. I need. Where's my craft? There's my craft. I need to remove this craft. This one doesn't exist anymore. There. Hybrid. Exalt slam to get a random prefix. And then craft the proper suffix as uh, a proper last prefix you want. And now you got the helmet. Now at this stage you will just need to use a spam embers till you hit something like mana cost. 
um, icons till you hit reservation efficiency. And if you want to push this helm further, you can, of course, I, I'm not going to spam the icons now. You, of course, can use the Orb of Conflict to further push this. A very quick introduction to Orb of Conflict. If you want to push, let's say I want to push the mana cost. I'm going to spend an, one icon to get, oops, yeah, one exceptional icon to get, why is exceptional not giving me a T4? Why is it only giving a T3? Okay, then we use a grand. I, I think it's bugged here. I think exceptional is after grand. So we use the... Oh, right. Sorry, the tiers are all the way around. I, I'm talking bullshit. I apologize. So we use an Ico, and now we want to push the mana cost here higher. So we use, use an op of conflict. It didn't hit. The other is T2. Now we do it again. Now this one is higher than this one. So we're going to use another random Ico, and we're going to apply it again. We're going to conflict. It hit. Perfect. We're going to again apply an Ico. We always want the one that we don't want to hit to be as high as possible so the chances of hitting the other one is better in this case i got unlucky the aisha and i now i would be on the perfect now this is how you get it to near perfect you will need a lot of exceptional of the one you don't want you need to roll grand for the one you want and then you need op of conflict to get it rolled up to the tier that you are happy with. But yeah, that's how you do the free, uh, the implicits on the helmet. On any Eldritch influenced item. Now, to be fair, at this point, most of our crafts are very similar. So, we're going to be moving on from the helmet and we're going to be moving to the body armor. We again want a, de want a deck space. We again want fractured chaos resistance. We again want to roll for spell suppression. We need, in this case, again, 81 for the Chaos Rest or 86 for T1 spell suppression. We want as much life as possible. And then we have a few options. Either we're going to be going for the prefix with the, uh, the unveiled prefix, which we can see here. Where is it? Oh, this is craft. This is veiled. Chance to avoid ailments. This is really great, but it will be needing unveiled. So we hit with this and with boots and with the tree, we hit our island avoidance cap. And we, for the suffixes, we can use the reservation efficiency from the essence of loathing again. If I would find it there, reservation efficiency for the essence of loathing. Or we can get strength or intelligence if needed. I like to use loathing here. Because in the current states of the world, we don't really need strength or int. We can get one piece of gear with int, but we don't need to grab it on the tree, which is a, a is a reasonable assumption. So you can get int on either body or helmet. So we then roll our essence. We have chaos rest fractured. We roll to spell suppression. We again gonna use eldritch crafting for the prefixes. Now in this case, you can once you have the good life. Now it gets different. So we head to the emulator. Calculator settings, want to use a very high evasion base. So we have our break chart chaos res. We roll for spell suppression uh, with an essence of loathing or an essence of spite. Hey, look, I hit T2 spell suppression. What a surprise. Now we are at the prefixes, so we're going to be again applying currency to make the uh, exarch dominant we're gonna remove the random prefix we have we're gonna be crafting again we can look what has a higher rating so we have a higher rating on flat than on percentage we're gonna be crafting flat evasion again so we have our flat evasion we exert slam we didn't get life Sorry, I should also do it correctly. We then annul. Oh, we remove the craft, then we annul. Then we put the craft back on again. We exert slam. We, we remove the craft. Exert slam. Uh, we annul slam. We add the craft. We exert slam. We repeat this process till we hit a high life modifier. Once we've hit the high life modifier, 
we're going to craft the prefix. Suffixes can be changed. Once we have this state, we really need to pray. We want to hit a veiled orb and we want to not hit our life. If we... Wait, what? Why is the veiled orb always taking both prefixes? I I understand the issue because in Craft of Exile it is still Iceling, but we check on trade, remove the random modifier, adds a random veiled modifier on a rare item. So in trade you want to use a veiled orb. In Craft of Exile we'll have to do it with Iceling, just because that is uh, how it's currently implemented here. So we do this, we hit our life, we are set. In this case, we have, uh, if we hit the life, now I need to show this. Wow, and now that I want to show this, I'm not hitting the life anymore. So we hit the life. Our suffixes can be, uh, our suffix can be changed, it's still there. So we can, we have two options here. We need to unveil first. Then we can technically hit an annulment and just annul what we just unveiled. Or, because we might just remove the suffix, can be changed. We just scour, because we already have the craft. We recraft it on, uh, and sorry, we remove the craft. We then work on our life again, and then we need to craft this again. Once we've gotten the life back on it. Oops, it's the wrong life. Once we've gotten the life back on it. Best prepared crafting guide ever. Once we got the life back on it, we're going to be crafting the suffix can be changed again. And then we are back to the veiled orb mentioned. Just need to do the isling here. Now we're going to assume we successfully kept our life. We can now unveil a prefix. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be blocking again something. If we check the calculator, the best thing we can block is to block either attack or spell block a uh, block block okay i keep clicking on the wrong window so we're gonna be having chance to block spells here we're gonna unveil and we're gonna hope for a chance to avoid elemental elements if we don't hit this there's a there's a rescuing touch which is why we always try to make the body armor before we make the boots if you don't hit avoidance and you hit life, if you hit percentage life instead, we're going to be crafting the other thing. This will be our finished body. So if we wouldn't have hit life and we would have hit avoidance, we would be happy. In this case, we are slightly less happy, but I get to how to fix this in a moment. Now the, the prefixes, we again would be using Eldritch Currency to fix our prefixes and then the body is done. Now on our boots, we want to fix the rest. It is worth noting that the avoidance thing in my current POB, I'm not using avoidance on gear. I'm just using a high, uh, um, a high evasion rating on the body. This is because I am using a purity of elements on the high budget to get my avoidance in. However, this isn't guaranteed. This might be subject to change, but I do want to cover this crafting guide with avoidance being mentioned because maybe not this league, maybe in future leagues we do want avoidance again. So I'd rather have avoidance covered. And gonna mention now that we, if we don't need avoidance, we can just get evasion rating. Just get as much evasion rating as possible on the prefix. And then craft life and uh, percentage life will be fine. But anyway, if we want the boots with avoidance and we hit only 20% craft avoidance on the body. We have an option to get the rest of the avoidance on the boots. So we have 20 on the tree and 20 on the body. So we need 60 avoidance on the boots. The first thing that we need to be aware of is that we can roll 31 to 35 avoidance with an essence. So we're going to again be using an essence on a fractured chaos rest basis. We want slink or stealth boost, high evasion rating, or of course a new basis. We again want 81. 86 would be the basis which we need to hit is it t1 movement speed and 85 for t1 spell suppression then we're gonna be having our fractured suffix 
we're gonna be using an essence of loathing again the same one we used for the helmet and, and or body we now have the avoidance we have the chaos rest and we're gonna roll for spell suppression we have our suffixes and now we need to work on the prefixes on the boots we have two ways of doing this we can just hit the veiled orb with the prefix suffix can be changed so that we don't risk anything on our suffixes this is assuming we don't have any prefixes so we can guarantee that by using influence and then annul the prefixes off till we don't have anything anymore then we craft suffix can be changed we use the veiled orb and then we can craft which was it now i need to check myself what i wanted to uh, block here we're gonna be blocking evasion rating with hybrid life so we have where is it there craft this unveil hit movement speed or hit life if we hope for movement speed either with onslaught or without and then we're gonna be crafting life and that would be the cheap way to do this the more expensive and ex uh, the i guess kind of also better way because it would result in better stats is we are first gonna be rolling uh craft life wouldn't be 80 90 craft life would be 70 with the new higher life rods, we first gonna use Elvish Crafting till we hit T1 life. Then we're gonna craft. So assume we have used Eldritch Crafting to hit T1 life. Then we're gonna craft suffix can be changed. Then we're gonna just like with the body armor do the Iceling Slam. Hope we don't hit the life. Then we're gonna be crafting the hybrid again. But unveil we hit our movement speed and then we're gonna be crafting the where is it percentage evasion rating and then we will be done with the boots now if we only gotten 20 percent avoidance craft on the body we will be needing to use eldritch currency and we need to use uh, we need to get 30 percent avoidance on the eater influence if I look here, where is it? There we go. Avoid elements. We can see that we will be needing a T1. Now, just with the helmet, the process is the same. If we hit, if we didn't hit the unveil on the body and we are otherwise really happy with the body we will be needing to get our icon or exceptional icon on avoidance apply one exceptional ember and use the op of conflict hope that we hit the avoidance we did it then we apply a oh, oh nobody saw that we're gonna reset our ember to an exceptional we're gonna hit it one more time and of course we're gonna definitely hit it on the first try and then we are at a 31% avoidance. So we have 30 on the prefix, 30 on the suffix. Technically, I guess we can work with T2. I, I completely blanked on that for a moment. If Of course, if this is 31 to 35, getting 29 is also enough to get our 60 avoidance on the boots. Sorry, we don't need T1. We just need to get T2. So get it once with Grant get two op of conflict hit or get it with exceptional get one op of conflict hit and then we have 60 avoidance on boots and that would be done now for the gloves the gloves are a little bit more complicated because the gloves we want a mod specific modifier on the gloves that we want want a temple mod so there is this temple suffix that has cold rest and increased damage with hits against chilled enemies. Now there is a neat little thing we can do to make the obtaining of the base item easier. We want high evasion gloss. We again want them to be on a proper level like 81. And we want the suffix from the temple. Now let's say, oh well, sucks to be us. We didn't 
got the cold one, we got one with fire. Now a thing that is very important to notice is that with harvest, we can change fire to cold and it works on this thing. This is something that as far as I know, a lot of people are aware of, but not everybody is aware of. So I did want to share it here as well. So we can look for any of these temple things. So edits damage against burning enemies, increase damage resist against shield enemies, or crit chunks against shocked enemies. Get it on the gloves. Then we either want this, if we want to get this cheaply. We're looking for gloves that have this and any other resistance modifier. And we just got to use Eldritch Crafting on the prefixes. If we want to get this in a really cool state, we're going to be having the good old three modifiers. As a craft example here. And we will be needing to fracture this. And we hope to fracture our mate. Three, four, five, six, seven. um, game. Where's my average? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This was very unlucky, which is why it's always worth considering buying these things instead of trying to fracture yourself. We want this thing to be fractured. And then we want to craft. So we're going to treat this exactly like any other item from this stage. It's just that this fracture doesn't naturally get fracture dropped. So it's going to be more expensive. So we have this as our suffix. Now the essence of our choice is either going to be an essence of envy for chaos rest. Right? Let me check if I'm not saying anything wrong. Yes. Either envy for chaos resistance. Or, which would also be a great thing to do. Where is it? Zeal for attack speed. If you already have Chaos Rest Capped, or you are going to be Chaos Rest Capped with Progenesis, you can use an Essence of Zeal. Now, we're going to roll this again to Spell Suppression. So we have our Guaranteed Essence Spot, our Suffix we already have, and then we're going to roll this till we get our Spell Suppression. Assumingly, eventually, we're going to hit our Spell Suppression. We are done with the suffixes of the glove, and then it's back to Eldritch Crafting for the prefixes. You know the drill at this point. We make exact dominant. We remove the prefix we don't need. We're going to be crafting the prefix uh, flat evasion again. We have flat evasion. Hey, great. We exert slam. We hit a life we don't want. We move the craft. We Eldritch and null. We add the craft, we exalt slam, and we repeat this till we hit our high life modifier, which again, next tick is will be buffed. Once we have the higher life, we then are going to be slamming a random other modifier, preferably high percentage evasion. But of course, not always going to be hitting this. Actually, never mind. I have completely blanked again. I apologize. I do some mistakes as well. We want to again do our good old suffix can be changed because there's one more modifier we want in our gloves in this stage. We want to get our hands on a rail prefix. And a rail prefix, right, I forgot, we need to block. So we what the craft we're going to be blocking is conversion. We're going to be block, blocking conversion, we're going to unveil, and we hope for, which in this case, this is one of the... It can take some time. We hope for the projectile pierce unveil. And the craft of our choice at the end will be... Is it... Damage while leeching or damage during flask effect. While with damage during flask effect being slightly better. So we have flask effect. Spell suppression. Temple cold res. Attack speed or chaos res. Plus one projectile. Uh, plus one pierce on the projectile. And a high life. And on the Eldritch Implicit, we then can roll for plus one pierce and chance to gain or gain rage on hit every about one second. And that will be the gloves. Now the ring, I'm I'm gonna be very simplistic on the ring. I honestly think the ring is gonna be fine just buying. For most cases, the ring that we want be, and at least if we're not going for an omni, is just good resistances, life, and mana cost. 
this ring will be more than suffice. Now, of course, we could go all oh, fancy. I want an implicit on it. I want frenzy charge on it. I want onslaught on it or whatnot. But honestly, just any resistance fixing ring with really good resistances and life and non channeling cost will be enough. Now, I'm going to assume we have our suffixes. And I'm going to show how we get the prefixes. So I will just buy a ring with good suffixes. Let's say we have our two stone ring, or let's say we have an M assist ring. We have the suffixes. So the suffixes are maybe T1, all res, cold res, fire res. Let's say this is our suffixes. Now to get our prefixes, we're going to be crafting. Suffixes cannot be changed. We're going to be using a veiled chaos, which is going to guarantee this. Then we're going to be crafting the prefix mana. Going to unveil, which is almost always guaranteed to be live. Sometimes you get triple flat, but normally. Did they change the rating? Am I talking bullshit? We are blocking mana, which we block all these with just a mana craft. And then we have three times flat added. And then one time life. So this is an equal rating and it should appear at an equal amount of odds. So I, I'm just getting unlucky. Okay. So it's still the same. Yeah. We're going to get our life. We're going to slam a random prefix. And then we're going to be crafting the mana cost. So the idea is to have really good suffixes. And once we have really good suffixes, we're just going to be getting a veiled prefix into mana cost into a random last prefix. Now, there's one last thing we should be covering, and that is our, our clusters. For the large bow cluster, we want to be at level 50 to 67. Now, I will note here, these clusters are very affordable on the first few days of the league. And as people are leaving campaign, they're going to get very expensive real quick. Getting it on a higher level crafted is taking slightly more currency. But once those got expensive, it is better than to just force buy a 50 to 67. So what we can do here is we're going to use Feed the Fury, Fuel the Fight, and any of this. No, wait, I'm talking bullshit. I am... For the first one, fuel the fight, arcing shots, said what it was. And any of the suffixes will result in arcing shots and fuel the fight to be in the front side. The way to craft this is you're going to roll for arcing shots, which has a lower rating than fuel the fight. We're going to roll to this and any of these three. Then we're going to augment. So we have this rolled, augment for here. Let's say martial prowess. Then regal. Hoping that it hits Fuel the Fight. If it doesn't hit Fuel the Fight we, and it hit a suffix, we can exit them, hoping it hits Fuel the Fight. I looked at it and I looked at Fossil Combination or Harvest Crafting that makes it more likely. But this seems to be the most efficient way to get at Arcing Shot Fuel the Fight. For our second large cluster, which is Heat the Fury, Martial Prowess, and then any of the following prefixes. Calamitous. Devastator, if we can roll it, drive to destruction or fuel the fight. We'll replace Speed to Fury and Martial Prowess at the front. So we're gonna take the same game. We roll for Feed to Fury. We're gonna augment to be hit Martial Prowess, and then we're gonna buy it with any of the. Uh, then we're gonna a Regal Exot Slam for any of the other three, uh, other four for the backside. Now, to note, these large clusters aren't usually that expensive, and it could just be that it's worth more to just buy the finished product. But in case you're an SSF, now you know how to craft this. Finishing with the medium clusters. We want one medium cluster with projectile damage, which is going to be Shrieking Ball uh, Repeater Streamlined. You can see those are both level 1 mods, so getting it below level 50 is the easiest to get this but again keep in mind early on cheap later on expensive but they are very common to roll so getting any base and just roll for one augment regal hope to get the other exalt slam if you got two suffixes 
and repeat this till you get them or buy them. They are really cheap most of the time. And the last other one, the final one, is Flask Duration. And we want Special Reserves by Concoction, which is going to be back to 50 to 67. We are going to be rolling for Spike Concoction and then Augment Regal Exalt Slam if needed for the Special Reserve and that's it. So hopefully I didn't forget any of the items. If you got any questions, if anything was unclear, as usual, feel free to ask for specifically the trading. Specifically for the thing, please use the thread here. I try to make uh, keep everything there close together so it's not gonna be the all the way push up so people can still find this and still respond to this easily. But yeah, again, anything question, anything asked, Twitch, comment section, or Discord, feel free to ask and I will be answering as fast as possible. Video has been long enough. Have a wonderful day and I see you in my next video. All live on Twitch. Goodbye.